storm. Well, next we are speaking with an activist investor who will tell us why he likes a certain casino stocks and also what he thinks of some of the headlines that other activist investors are making this year. We are back in just two minutes. With Activist investors such as Bill Ackman, David Einhorn, Dan Loeb, Carl Icahn have been making their positions more public these days. Our next guest is expanding his activist role with at least one gaming stock. Jason Ader is with me now. He is the CEO of Ader Investment Management. It's a family office, about a billion dollars in assets under management. Jason, welcome to Money Moves. Glad to have you with us. I know you have a long position in IGT, International Game Technology. And for people who don't know, it's basically designs, manufacturers, computers gaming equipment. Why such a big position for you, which is $130 million, 3% of the company? Well, I, I mean, when I took the position, I thought it was undervalued. And uh, it's an area where I have great expertise. And uh, the reason it's undervalued has to do, I think, you know, with two things. One, um, corporate governance. Um, this is a company that failed, say, on pay uh, last year. And, and I think there's room for improvement in corporate governance. And in addition, allocation of capital. There's been you know, several acquisitions made by this company that I think raise investor questions about their ability to earn high returns on capital for uh, the creation of future shareholder value. And you obviously feel like the market, all the investors that are in the market are not understanding these two possibilities. Well, I think it's, it, it's hurt the valuation multiple. Uh, if the company's trading now at one of its lowest historic multiples in, in, in 10 years. In fact, this is a company that before I became an investor, I was an analyst. I, I followed. So for 20 years, I have a history with this company. We've never seen a trade at such a low multiple. And to me, there was a big disconnect in terms of what this business could be worth if led uh, and governed properly versus what the current market's willing to trade for this company. Jason, again, leading on your expertise, I know you're at Bear Stearns for as long as you just alluded to as an analyst and a senior managing director when you left. New, York, New Jersey Governor Chris Christie just saying he actually may allow an expansion. He may allow online gambling if certain conditions can be met. What does that change? What would that change for IGT, your position there, mm -hmm. if anything? Well, it's coming. Uh, online gaming is coming. And so the question is, how has IGT and its management position themselves for that. You know, the opportunity really is for the casino licensees. That's going to be Caesars, that's Boyd Group. It actually puts now IGT's customers potentially in direct competition with them as a supplier. That's never a good thing. When you're a core supplier to the industry, you don't want to be in competition with your customers. And that's been really one of my concerns um, as, as I've, I've, I've reflected in my letters to the board. And in fact, I was just looking at some shares in London, actually, and there's a lot of online gaming companies there that actually moved higher on this mm -hmm. news. So you're saying, okay, this change is going to come sooner or later. It's the first step. The question is, how is it going to manifest itself? And, and I've always been of the belief that federal law on Internet gambling was going to be very difficult. But state by state, and particularly a state like New Jersey or California, where they need the revenues and where there has been shortfalls in the budget, uh, online gaming solutions and online gaming, online poker is a very logical next step. Uh, scientific Games bought WMS last week. That was announced. What does that mean? What does that say to you about the slot machine business? Well, it's consolidating. And in the context of IGT, I mean, I think it, Rex Scientific Games has historically been a, a, a savvy buyer of gaming assets, a smart buyer. And I think it shows that there are willing, smart, sophisticated buyers willing to acquire into the slot machine industry at, at albeit high valuation multiples. And Jason, again, according or because of your expertise, you're on the board of LBS Las Vegas Sands. And I know that company gets about 90% of its revenue at this point from Asia. How does being on that board form your decisions about all the other positions you have? Well, the Macau market has been very strong, and, and obviously it's been correlated to the growth in the Chinese economy, and their capacity continues to get added into the Macau market. Infrastructure improvements like uh, the bridge from Hong Kong, high-speed rail interconnect, continue to drive growth overall in Macau. Where we're seeing the most exciting area in Macau for IGT is in the mass market play. These are, these are Chinese customers who would like shopping at Walmart or eating at McDonald's. They like to play video games, too, video casino-type games. And so there's still a great opportunity for IGT and other equipment manufacturers to build product for that marketplace. So, Jason, obviously you're very active in this 
space. It's one where you have expertise. I'm just curious, as a fellow activist investor, how you see some of the headlines, quite frankly, that have been generated from other activist investors, ones who have gone very public. I mean, we were talking a lot about Apple. We were just talking about that with Einhorn, really pressuring the company, taking it to court, in fact, to try to get the management to change its stance on giving some cash back to shareholders. We've been talking a lot about Herbalife and this face-off between Icon and Bill Ackman. How do you see an activist role and the public nature, or what is clearly becoming the public nature of building a position? Shareholders have a right to have a voice. They own a part of the company and they deserve to have their voice heard by a board and management should be sensitive to the needs of all shareholders. And there has been a pattern historically of companies ignoring the voice of shareholders and it's had negative implications for all shareholders. And over the last few years it's been proven that activists can add value for companies and for all shareholders and I think that this this trend will continue uh, as evidence in the performance of many activist funds. So as you see it it's basically keeping the board honest right if it's a good idea why shouldn't it be weighed? Keeping the board governance focused on creating shareholder value keeping management focused on the fact that there's really only one thing, thing that they're working for and that's for the good of the shareholders. Jason thanks so much for the time. Yeah. Jason Ader joining us there he is the CIO and CEO of Ader in investment management. When